One thing about our Baltimore Ravens is they do not care what your record is. Last week, they go against the Detroit Lions, who came in at 5-1, and one, and they blow them out the water. This week, they go against the 1-6 the Arizona Cardinals, and they have a close, tight game with them. That's them Baltimore Ravens for you. But at least they got the win. So that's one thing we are gl all glad about. They got the win. It was a bit of an ugly one. Had some ugly moments, but they got the job done, and that's the most important thing of all. So, team, keep it clean. I'm here to share my post-game thoughts from the game that we all watched. A lot of us together in the live stream. Appreciate y'all uh, yesterday with the Baltimore Ravens and the Arizona Cardinals. And, boy, this ended up being a game for a while. It was 7-7 for a while. It was 14-7. Then the Baltimore Ravens, they jumped out to a much bigger lead. But then that lead started to crumble. Now, I know there are going to be some people say, oh, that was garbage points. To me, that was not garbage points or garbage time at all. Because the Arizona Cardinals gave themselves a shot. They really did. They gave themselves a shot, and they pulled within seven, especially with the onside kick. Shout out to Nelson Aguilar. And it's okay because you, you made up on the next one. So that was good. But the Arizona's, they, they they end up making it a seven-point game, and they had a shot to get an onside kick back and score again, but they didn't get that second onside kick, thank goodness. Now, in this game, uh, the offense, um, shout out to Gus Edwards because he called it out in a subtle Gus Edwards type of way. He said, we, we should have started running sooner. He said, I'm, I, I'm glad we started running when we did. I uh, wish we would have done it a little sooner because we saw some things on film, and I know I was talking to my guy who's a Cardinals fan before the game, and he was like, man, our weakness is a run defense. That is our big weakness, is run defense. Ravens, first half of this game, they were airing it out. Now, maybe, hopefully, the reason that they were doing this was, one, I mean, to try to score points, but also uh, to try to throw them off, to throw the Cardinals off for the second half uh, game plan. Maybe, because maybe they were just setting it up. Maybe they were playing a long game. I don't know. Um, but they were not really running the ball in the first half at all. Now, when they would run, it would look good, but they weren't really running the ball in the first half at all. They were airing that thing out like crazy, but it wasn't really until the second half where they really started running the ball. Shout-out to Gus Edwards. Had a nice career day. Uh, 19 carries for 80 yards. Average 4.2 yards per carry, so that's nice. Uh, but the most important thing, the nicest thing, three touchdowns, three of them. One, two, three. Gus scored 21 points. Well, 18 points technically, but you get it. Gus scored 21 points. And that's always nice when you can get into the red zone and finish. And that's what the Baltimore Ravens did. Um, Contributor in the run game, too. Hey, Devin Duvin, they ain't the only jet sweep king. Look like we got a little prince on the roster, too. And Rashad Bateman. And Rashad Bateman, he said, watch this. He said, watch this Devin DuVernay. And he said, watch this Zay Flowers. I can do the jet sweeps too. So they got Rashad Bateman. I like them seeing getting Rash I like them getting Rashad Bateman involved in a different way. That was in a much different way than what we used to. So they had him on that jet sweep and whatnot. And shout out to Rashad Bateman because he really turned into Batman on, <clears throat> excuse me, the Lamar Jackson pass, the, the Lamar Jackson deep pass. That should have been a pick. Should have been a pick all day. But Rashad Bateman turned into Batman because he saved the day. You saw the little bat signal float up in the air when that ball was up in the air. And then especially when uh, the defender pretty much had it in his hands, that bat signal was going off like crazy, like, save us, save us, save us. And Rashad Bateman said, oh, I'm the man for the job. And he came through and he took the ball away from the defender. We loved it. We loved it because it showed Rashad Bateman being aggressive. It showed him taking control and taking over on that play. Because <laughs> had he not done that, that would have been an interception. And Lamar also had another almost interception that he threw to Odell Beckham Jr. I um, mean, him and Odell Beckham Jr., they, they try him. The Baltimore Ravens, they try him. Lamar Jackson, Odell, they, they try him. And they get closer every week. They get closer every week. But this week, they, they, were just, they couldn't get it done. Now, Odell Beckham Jr., he did draw some penalties, which was nice. I mean, <laughs> that'll certainly help move the ball down the field. But um, they just they couldn't get it. I don't even think he had a catch. He had I know he had at least three targets because he had one target on an inside slant. That got broken up. He had another target on a comeback. And I don't know if Lamar threw it too <coughs> early or late. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know if Lamar threw it too early or late or Odell Beckham Jr. turned around too late. Oh, yeah, I don't know if Lamar threw it too early or Odell Beckham Jr. turned around too late, but they were just out of sync on that. It was close. They were, they were really, really close, but they were just out of sync on that comeback route, so they didn't get it. And then with the, the deep ball, the pass toward the end zone, it was a perfect pass. It was literally a perfect pass. Uh, then there was some little pass interference there. Uh, they did get the call. Um, Odell, still, he still had a shot at making a catch. He still had a shot at making, uh, coming down with it, but he just he couldn't. He, he didn't. 
So uh, and he like they got the pass interference. So the ball is at the one, and Odell he did he takes his helmet off. We see all the purple hair. He said ah, he he, he was heated. So he was like I wanted my catch. And Lamar expressed to the media afterwards, he's like, yeah, we, 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 we're trying to get Odell a touchdown. He deserves it. He deserves it. So I know a lot of Ravens fans have talked about the Baltimore Ravens feeling like they're almost force-feeding Odell Beckham Jr. And I don't know. Uh, I, I don't really feel that way. I feel like a lot of times they force feed Zay Flowers more than really anybody. And I mean, you can see why, because when he got the ball in his hands, he can make a lot of stuff happen. But um, as far as force feeding Odell Beckham Jr., I mean, you'd be paying him fifteen million dollars. Uh, he right now he is not on pace to get any of the incentives because he gets one million incentives for most catches, one mil for most touchdowns, one mil for most yards. He is not on pace to get any of those. Stuff could change, but yeah, it, we'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah, Zay Flowers, Zay Flowers had a couple of catches. Um, he didn't have anything crazy. I I, I don't I don't recall. Um, let me just look at the numbers. They fly, yeah, five catches for 19 yards. So yeah, n nothing crazy at all uh, in this game. Really, <coughs> excuse me, none of the receivers really had anything, any crazy numbers, any eye popping numbers, anything like that. Very uh, modest game um, from our our pass catches because the most yards that anybody had was Mark Andrews. He had 40 yards. Justice Hill had four catches for 40 yards. Bateman had two catches for 34 yards. Um, so yeah, the 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 passing game wasn't really. Wasn't going crazy uh, in yesterday's game, um, but the running game that that was uh, well, it was a mix of both and, and obviously the defense too. The defense is what uh was shined in yesterday's game, and shout out to the defense because they're we know it's gonna be games like that. Some games the offense got to carry, some games the defense got to carry. We love the games where they both carry each other and hold hands and then they'll walk all happily and whatnot. But so that it is what it is. Um, just looking at the defense. Uh, looking at Josh Dobbs, he went 25 for 37, uh, two touchdowns and two interceptions. One of those touchdowns came toward the end of the game. Excuse me, I'm dealing with this annoying cough. You know when you're at the end of a cold and you still got that like that dry, annoying cough? So my apologies, y'all. But anyway, um, Josh Dobbs, he got that the one touchdown to Hollywood Brown toward the end of the game. Uh, and the other touchdown was to, oh, Trey McBride, tight end who was literally wide open all game in the middle of the field. Up the same on the sideline he was, he, was up, he was open all game long And I'm like man Every time we see 85 I think that's his number 85 He, he was just sitting there He was sitting there Beating the Ravens on and whatnot, Just chilling Sitting around Oh you gonna throw me the ball Hey there it goes So <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me But um, Trey McBride All game long Just Wide open And making some nice catches too Even when he was contested He made some nice catches man uh, So shout out to him um, Hollywood in this game of defense, they, they really didn't let him do much of anything. Uh, he did get, like I said, he got most of his toward the very end of the game, especially after they got that onside kick. But Hollywood wasn't really doing much. And, I mean, even with the touchdown, he had six catches for 33 yards. So he didn't really do much of anything. Uh, Joshua Dobbs, he had a rushing touchdown. Um, that's when they faked it to the running back, and Josh Dobbs ended up keeping it. And he ran it right in. Um, the Ravens run defense in this game. <laughs> I thought Cardinals, my, my, my Cardinals guy, he told me they had a weak run defense in this game. You would have thought the Ravens had a weak run defense. The way that they were letting uh, Cardinals running back just run all over. And I'm like, man, what, what is this? But the pass defense and the pass rush, and specifically Michael Pierce. This was a legacy game for Michael Pierce. He was amazing this game. And I remember a couple of weeks ago, Michael Pierce was speaking at a Baltimore Ravens presser. And he was talking about how Mike McDonald uses the big guys. And he said a lot of times you would think that, like, on third and long on passing down, the big guys would come off the field and you would just have pass rush. But, no, he said he, he finds a way to use us and make us effective. And I'm like, I'm, look, at you see this game. And I'm like, oh, yeah, they, he does. He does. Like, Michael Pierce, if it's third and long, I'm always thinking, I, I, well, before that presser, I would always be thinking, oh, yeah, he's a big guy. Yeah, he coming off the field on third and long. He ain't going to be out there for what? What's Michael Pierce going to do? Wrong. That man was killing it yesterday. Ew, he made a big a big tackle on the fourth down. He swatted the ball on another play. He got the sack for force of fumble. He, he was all over, man. He was all over. And that was a beautiful thing to see because it's nice when – because yesterday I didn't notice any wild plays from Roquan Smith or Patrick Queen. They've been making them every week. Uh, so for them to take a week off, okay, no problem. But to see it from somebody else too. That was a beautiful thing. Now, somebody who we have continued to see wild plays from, and hey, it continued yesterday, Geno Stone. 
or should we call him Geno Reed or Ed Stone, whatever you want to call him. Shout out to Geno Stone, man, because he amazing. We got we got a big conversation to have about him later. Those of y'all that were in the stream, you already know what we're talking about. But we're gonna talk about that later on this week uh, after Tuesday, because yeah, anyway, um, Geno Stone, amazing man, amazing. Five interceptions. You you not you weren't even a starter. I mean, you, you ain't even started this whole season. He didn't start week one. Then Marcus Williams was out for a couple weeks, so Geno Stone was starting. But then Marcus Williams came back, so Geno Stone didn't start again. But then Marcus Williams, he ended up being out again. So this man is, he is amazing, man. He, he getting his check, man. He, he getting that bread. Who, who will it come from? We'll see. But again, we'll have that conversation later on this week. So shout out to Geno Stone. And, and on his pick, he actually took his pick from Brandon Stevens. Brandon Stevens should have had two. But Geno Stone, he jumped right in front. He said, no, this is mine. Uh, Cause Brandon Stevens had it, and I mean, we can assume Brandon Stevens would have caught it, cause he be catching his picks now. So, and he caught the pick later on, or was it early on in the game, or was it after that? I don't even remember. It don't even matter. But Brandon Stevens, he, I, I love those right place, right time picks too, because they steal interceptions. The Baltimore Ravens still get the ball, lands in their hands, and it's still there. Brandon Stevens caught one of those where um, Joshua Dobbs overthrew his target. Brandon Stevens was right there, boom, easy interception. And I love it, man. I loved it. So it, it was really, really nice to see. Uh, it's nice to see, again, other people stepping up. I mean, Brandon Stevens, he's been stepping it up all year. Brandon Stevens has pleasantly surprised so many of us Baltimore Ravens fans this year with his play uh, and his consistent play. Um, so we're very, very uh, happy about that. Um, as far as the pass rush, uh, Ravens got, they got two sacks. Um, one of them was from Michael Pierce. Uh, the other one was from, oh, <laughs> that guy. Matter BK, I completely forgot about it. But yeah, that's when he he started the sack. Um, and then I think uh, who got the second half of that? I mean, it didn't count as a half sack, but Matter BK started it, and I think it was either Javian Clowney or Dafe Away. They got a little piece of it, but it was Matter BK's obviously because he got credited with the whole thing. Um, yeah, he he knows every week. Every week this guy gets sacks every week. So every week his price just keeps going up. So Ravens, ah, yeah, yeah, look, y'all, y'all got it, y'all got it. The, the decision is all yours. Whatever y'all gonna do or not gonna do is it's all up to y'all. But man, y'all, <laughs> tough decisions to make. Really, we we did a video a couple days ago about tough decisions that the Ravens got to make. Yes, and he was definitely on that list. Whew. Oh man, that's yeah. He he's gonna get a lot of money, and this is only week eight. It's only week eight. We still got a lot more games to go. So <laughs> his money is going. Like this man, I think what he got six and a half sacks right now. Let me try. Let me try to look it up real quick, man. Because Justin Matabike is balling, man. He really, yeah, he got six and a half sacks right now through uh, eight games. Six and a half sacks through eight games. So we got what nine games left because of seventeen games. So he could reach double digit sacks. When the last time we had somebody reach double digit sacks, but have we have Ravens ever had an interior defensive lineman? Even though he could be interior exterior, but have they ever had an interior defensive lineman reach double digit sacks? Because Lodi Nada, I don't, I don't think Lodi Nada did it. Did he? I, I don't remember. Y'all know my memory messed up. So if somebody did, my apologies, but I, I don't recall when it's been. And even if somebody did it before, it's been a really, 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 really extremely long time since anybody um, reached double digit. Sex. Um, Cause Matt Judon, what was Matt Judon getting like? I think he would get like nine for the Ravens, something like that. Well, Matt, did Matt Judon get double digit sex for the Ravens? I, I don't even remember. My, my apologies, y'all. But anyway, Matt BK is trending up. He can, continues to trend up every single week. So shout out to him. Um, but anyway, Baltimore Ravens they end up getting a win. Uh, it, they don't like making it easy. That's the Baltimore Ravens that we know and love and cherish, right? Uh, they don't like making stuff easy. Um, but they did get it done, and that's always the most important thing, getting a job done. Whether it's pretty, whether it's ugly, whether it's difficult, whether it's not so difficult, uh, they got the job done. Ravens sitting at 6-2 and two right now, one of the best records in the AFC, uh, and tied with like a million other teams for the second best record in the NFL. Um, so it's nice. Now they got the Seahawks coming into town. That's going to be a tough game. That's going to be a stressful game, I'm sure, because they playing some real good football. But, again, with these Ravens, like, <laughs> yeah. uh, we'll talk about it later. But with the Ravens, like, I, who knows? 
Could it be another Lions game? Because Seahawks are rolling right now. They they rolling right now. And again, that that's, that would just that would be very Raven like to just beat the Seahawks down. To win by like 13, 14 points to, to like beat them down and, and win decisively. That would be extremely Raven of them. But anyway, we'll cross that bridge uh when we get there next week. Um today is a very busy day. We will be streaming on Bleacher Report uh, later on today, so look out for that. Uh, Going to be talking about some Ravens on there, so appreciate y'all, any of y'all that watch that. Um, and also, I mean, I know, I know a lot of y'all been watching these uh, Varsity Jackets. If you want to get your own Varsity Jacket, you go to StandWithUsClothing.com, um, and the link is right down below in the description of this and every video. Uh, it'll take you straight to the jackets. You got this one, uh, you got the black and gray one, you got the black and purple one, black and purple, black and purple, black and purple. Anyway. Uh, and if you want an additional 10% off, see, it, it gets even better. They like the good news just keeps coming. Get, if you want the uh, additional 10% off, you can use code engraven. So I love y'all team. Keep it clean. I appreciate y'all so much. Y'all keep being amazing people that y'all are. I will see you later on. And we are out. Cause I know like, hey, you know, we, we wanted to talk about this game and whatnot, but I know what team keep it clean and a lot of Ravens fans really want to talk about is all the trades that could possibly be happening around the league, but specifically with the Baltimore Ravens.